Hey, what's up? It's your friend, Sergeant Safety, back again, ready to lead the way so we all can have a safer day. All right, today I'm gonna to talk about hypodermic needles. Unfortunately, I gotta talk about these because it's a pandemic here in California and probably throughout the nation, right? You're gonna find these hypodermic needles on construction sites, highway work sites. You're gonna find them in uh, parks, creeks, freaking levees. Uh, on the streets, depending on where you're living. Uh, who knows, man? You might be volunteering one day, not have a clue how to deal with these uh, hypodermic needles. You might be working on a construction site and come into uh, potential hazards, right, that you have to clean up so your uh, employees can um, be safe and work, right? So I'm going to be talking about the dangers of hypodermic needles. I'm going to talk about some California law. I'm going to talk about sh proper sharps containers and how to handle uh, and dispose hypodermic needles. Uh, so hypodermic needles can carry bloodborne pathogens, right? Pathogenic microorganisms in the blood that can lead to diseases such as hepatitis C, B, or HIV. You don't want that high five, believe me. All right. So a needle stick can mean weeks and weeks of taking drugs, medication, right? Uh, to, to prevent the spread of the infectious disease. Uh, these drugs can cause side effects as well, such as nausea, depression, extreme fatigue. You're not going to want that. And it could be months um, of periodic tests to see if that infectious disease actually was contracted, right? And if you do contract it, you can infect your family members, your loved ones. So you want to be able to be uh, safe on the job, safe on your uh, volunteer work, whatever that might be, because um, we're going to be finding hypodermic needles everywhere, and that's an unfortunate event. So, hey, follow me, and here we go. All right, so the California state law says, uh, and the law is uh, 118286, says that they make it illegal um, to dispose of sharps such as needles, uh, waste in uh, trash cans or regular recycling containers and in bags, right? So we got to make sure that we handle and dispose of these properly, not only to abide by the law, but to keep ourselves and our employees safe, all right? Uh, and the, the law requires that all sharps uh, waste be transported to a collection center in a approved sharps container. All right, and your local enforcement agency uh, will determine the approvals on those sharps containers. So check in with your local enforcement agencies. Now in California, uh, there's certain counties that uh, allow uh, rigid plastic containers such as bleach or uh, detergent bottles to handle these uh, as a show to to be in place of a sharps container because they're uh, non-penetrable, right, uh, from the needle. But you gotta have a lid and you gotta be able to uh, label it with a biohazard label. Uh, those counties that um, do allow the, that bleach or detergent bottle um, in California is Fresno, Mariposa, Merced, Napa, Riverside, Sacramento, Stanless, uh, Yolo, and Yuba counties. So if you're in any other county, check in with your local enforcement agency. Even if you're within those counties, I recommend using an approved uh, sharps container. All right. So uh, for disposal, right? Uh, use the services. Uh, you could use the services of hazardous spill cleanup uh, contractors. Or if you don't have that uh, luxury, locate a, uh, uh, a disposal facility. You can locate a disposal facility on Cal Recycle's website. You can go to California, California Department of Public Health, and you can look up for uh, Sharps consolidation points um, throughout California. So again, check out uh, Cal Recycle and uh, the Public Health California Department of Public Health websites to see those uh, locations where you could drop off and dispose of those uh, of the uh, Sharps and which I'm talking about needles specifically today. So an approved sharps container, what must it have? Sharps containers must be uh, utilized for disposal of any sharps and needles that may uh, puncture you, right? So on the work site. So um, the container should be leak proof, rigid, and puncture resistant. So leak proof, rigid, puncture resistant. All right, needles should never, never, never I'm gonna say never again, uh, be placed in a, a plastic bag. Now, 
Um, unfortunately, people have disposed of these needles in plastic bags, and those who uh, uh, transport those bags and handle those bags are at higher risk of being stuck and punctured and then getting that infectious disease that we talked about earlier. So we want to make sure that we're disposing of these needles in the proper way in the proper container. No bags, never. All right. By law, never. Okay. So again, uh, with the sharps containers, we do not want to store. So if you're in a work truck, um, if you're just, if you're from a volunteer site and you got to be, uh, dispose of it, um, or in the cab or, uh, whatever it might be, you don't want to ever store the sharps container where it could be easily accidentally contacted by yourself or by an employee or a friend, whatever it might be. You want to make sure you have your sharps containers uh, is stored in, in an area where its contact was limited and it's locked and easily avoided, all right? So um, store those containers in a secure area because you don't want somebody to accidentally go grab, say, their lunch pail or their jacket or some PPEs and then get stuck on the way, right? So uh, because there's a spill or something, you don't know what could happen, right? So we got to make sure that we store those uh, sharps containers uh, in a secure area. I'm going to switch over to a picture right here. I'm going to show you guys two pictures. This uh, first picture is going to be a, some sharps containers that can be used, right? So uh, here's some sharps containers right here. You got a, a variety of different ones. Uh, depending on the severity of your work site, um, I recommend always having a sharps container in the construction field because you don't know what you can may find. And I recommend having them always on cleanup sites uh, when you're doing volunteer work or you're uh, doing uh, litter abatement or debris removal. Uh, always have some type of sharps container. Bam. So we're going to move on to this next picture. I'm going to show you what we found at a uh, one illegal encampment. Look at all those, you know, so that's not an approved sharps container, first of all. Um, second, hey, hundreds and hundreds of needles. This is on one site. I mean, literally like a 10 by 20 site, and you're finding that amount of needles. This is Sacramento, California. It was at an illegal encampment, and uh, these guys picked these needles right there. Very dangerous, especially if you don't know how to properly handle them. So I'm going to switch back to my screen now, just uh, my picture. Bear with me because I want to uh, talk about how to properly handle uh, needles when you're exposed to them on the work site, volunteer work, whatever it might be. Um, you want to know how to properly handle these needles, right? Because uh, the five P's, if you listen to my other vi videos, Prior preparation prevents poor performance, and you never want to prepare poorly when you're dealing with these types of hazards. All right, so proper handling. Uh, under no circumstances should you ever, 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 ever use your hands. Don't use your hands to pick up a needle. You don't know what, what type of exposure you're at risk to, all right? Um, again, I talked about those biohazards such as Hep C, Hep B, and the high 5 HIV. Don't want it, believe me. All right, so what am I going to use? I'm going to use a litter stick, all right, a litter picker or some other type of device, you know, something that I could keep it away from my body and not use my hands, and I'll pick that needle safely, right? Um, but first, before I even pick the needle, I spot the needle, right? And I'm just like, all right, I got to get the supervisor. Hey, first I'm going to inform I'm going to communicate and inform my other workers around me. Hey, watch out. I got a couple needles in this spot, this spot. Hey, stand back. All right. I'm going to go get that sharps container out of the secure area. I go get that sharps container out of the secure area. I come over to the site. I put that sharps container on the ground. All right. I'm not going to hold it with my hands and say, hey, buddy, put it in here. Hey, come on. Come on. I know all us guys got great aim. Just check out the toilet seat, right? Uh, no, we don't. So I'm going to be like this. All right. Oh, now that guy got stuck, right? I don't want that. Don't want that at all. So I'm going to take that sharps container, place it on the ground. Now I'm going to check my surroundings once again. Everybody stand back. I'm going to communicate. Stay back away from the site. And I'm going to check my surroundings, right? I'm going to make sure I'm safe and my coworkers are safe or my volunteer workers are safe. I'm going to take that litter stick. 
or what other device you're gonna use, I'm gonna pick the needle. I'm gonna first have that, my arm fully extended. You see that, right? Fully extended, I'm gonna pick that needle up, needle facing down, needle facing down. I'm gonna have my arm extended, make sure I have that clear radius, right? And I'm gonna put that needle into the sharps container. Needle facing down, release, bam. Arm extended, needle pick it, needle facing down, goes into the sharps container, bam. That's how we do it, right? At no point did I say hold this container so I could try to get it in there and then accidentally stick you, right? Don't want that. Um, and then if you do feel like you have came into contact with any infectious items, um, such as a needle, you wanna notify your supervisors immediately so they can handle their protocol and keep you safe, right? It's your employee's responsibility to keep you safe at all times, all right? Um, and now, and then you could uh, wash your hands or the infected area uh, with a uh, towelette uh, wipe that you get out of the first aid kit. Disinfected, it has some type of disinfectant on it, so you could rub whatever area that was stuck, right? Uh, third, wash the contaminated area with soap and water make sure that we uh, have it nice and cleaned. And then fourth, go seek immediate uh, medical attention. All right, you're probably gonna get some blood work, get some medication, either hey, these big horse pills, antibiotics, don't wanna have to take them. Remember, they have side effects, right? Um, but hey, you wanna make sure that you are protected and uh, get, it, get rid of it if you do come into contact with it. Um, you don't wanna pass that stuff on to your families, right? So uh, that's all I got today. It was a short video. Uh, I just want to make sure everybody knows how to properly handle those biohazards with uh, dealing with uh, hypodermic needles, right? So uh, today I talked about the dangers. I talked about some California law, talked about proper sharps containers, and how to handle those uh, and dispose of hypodermic needles. So if you like this video, Please uh, click below, click like, click subscribe. Hey, and you'll see Sergeant Safety back again one day, ready to keep us uh, all safe. All right, Sergeant Safety out. All right.